What's up, YouTube? For today's video, where we full worst fighting type Pokemon team. Now, fighting types are generally a pretty damn good type, but I wanted to see what the uh, worst ones would be. Let me know what you think in the comment section. What do you think is the worst fighting type? We're going, obviously, we're going for more of, you know, fully evolved Pokemon here. Now, people, real quick, we are doing a shiny race on Twitch tonight. Make sure you are following. If you want to come to the stream and watch, I'd very much appreciate that. Uh, link is in the description. Go follow, people. It's going to be uploaded. Uh, this video is going to be uploaded, and then, like, an hour after this, we'll be streaming on Twitch. Uh, me and Kat are going to have a shiny race, so it's going to be really good. I hope you guys can rock up for it. They're always very, very entertaining. And, of course, that's the only place to catch the live streams now, so if you want to see them, if you want to be in the loop, make sure you uh, go over there and uh, follow and watch. All right, uh, we actually have a battle. Me and Kat had a battle today, and um, if you haven't checked out our channel, you should. That's in the description of the video. Earn me some brownie points, people. Off you go ahead. Go subscribe. So now we got a long executor putting my uh, throw to sleep here. Now, this was a special throw. Also, I'm going to explain why I think uh, these Pokemon belong here. Obviously, this is fully my opinion, right? So, you know, we're all open to our opinion. So, uh, we got a Trick Room, uh, a Lolly Executor. Well, I never, Kat's using Trick Room so rare, so this is like a, um, it's a really uh, rare sight to behold. So, anyway, I'm going to swap. I was thinking if I should swap out here or I might get set off on, but this is a special throw, so it's like, it's, it's, it's basically a hot steaming pile of mess, so it's not very good. So, I just kept it in. However, I woke up and I hit the trap edge with a solid hidden power dark and got a crit. <laughs> got a crit. So, this set was Focus Energy, Focus Miss, Grass Knot and Hidden Power Dart. We've got the ability is Mole Breaker Item Scope Lens. So going for the 100% crits because even with a crit, it's special attack is garbage. And that makes me want to use it even more. So basically with Throw, I see a very nice bulky Pokemon. Um... It, it, I mean, it is it is outclassed heavily by other Pokemon, obviously in speed tiers and obviously in attack tier too. So something like Ursaring with a, you know, a, a, a much better gut user uh, definitely is a lot better there. And obviously it's forced into its own kind of niche with like a bulky phaser, uh, like a bulky setup Pokemon. But however, it is relying on stuff. It'd have to rely on stuff like Rest Right and then, it, put, then it, it kind of puts it up so it could get set up on or forced to get rest, you know, sleep talk rest twice in a row. So I guess that's sort of some of the reasons why it uh, doesn't get used too much. Anyway, speaking of Pokemon that don't get used too much, we have Crab Orbital. Now, I really, really like Crab Orbital. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, got, it's got an amazing attack, right? No one can say it doesn't have an amazing attack. The things about it that I think hold it back right are its typing. Uh, speaking of Pokemon you don't see too much, we have Amractus. However, that's going to be a little bit scared of the Crab Omnil. We've got the Hypno coming in, and it's going to get hit by the big Ice Hammer from the Crab Omnil. However, Crab Omnil's typing kind of lets it down. Like, with that Ice typing, it allows stuff in, like, it's weak to fighting. You know, the most common type it's weak to fire, flying, steel, fairy, psychic. You know, it, it really isn't the greatest uh, additive typing to its fighting. So, that's definitely something to consider. And obviously, it's very, very low speed to um, basically if you're not using this guy into trick room it's it's not going to last too long really with all the weaknesses it has however if you run on a trick room or something like that it's very very good um, but of course if you're not running on trick room it's not going to get much usage at all so that's why it made this team however I really like a lot of these Pokemon I really like I use them all the time because they're fun Pokemon to use um, yeah I love that nice I love that nicer ice hammer under trick room and uh, it's nice offense uh, it's very, very good. Okay, so anyway, we've got a gum shoes coming here. I take out that uh, hypno. They're trying to. I was trying to get like a, uh, a uh, like a get past that plus two swagger and take out the hypno, which I did. Now we got the gumshoes going for the earthquake. I actually get past the confusion here, which is really nice. And I'm going to take out the gumshoes with a close combat. Um, it has a very, very powerful offense. That's why I like using it for. I mean, you could. On this one, I actually had Quick Claw. I had Max Health, Max Attack, and Quick Claw. Um, it, was, it was just a fun one. Like, after I use Ice Hammer and stuff like that, my speed boot drops off. I get, get like a lucky uh, first turn go. That, that'd be uh, yeah, that'd be kind of nice. So now we've got the Ram Parados coming. It's going to go for the Fire Punch. That's going to take out the Crab. But that's all good. It did a pretty damn good job there. I was happy with that. I love Ram Parados too. Um, obviously, it's, it, it, that's another Pokemon that doesn't get much uses. So anyway, we're going to bring in Primate. Now... Primate isn't, uh, it's quite an interesting Pokemon. So, in Primate, with Primate speed, right, there's, a, there's quite a few Pokemon that actually ha are around its speed. So, obviously, it's got a lot of competition there, right? Now, it does, in my opinion, it does have a, quite a big problem dealing with ghost types, right? It doesn't really have the greatest, like, dark type moves. I think, like, uh, like Night Slash or something. That's, like, the best attack that's got. It really doesn't really run that very much. Anyway, so Alolan Executor is going to live the final Gambit there. And it's going to eat a berry in the clouds and get lots of his health back. Man, I, I failed so much on my final Gambit Primate, you won't even believe it. 
So anyway, uh, half my team's down, so we've got to get rid of this Alolan Executor. So I've got Ice Punch on my Hitmonchan. Um, but as, as we're doing three battles tonight, if I didn't mention we got a triple battle special, so I'll be able to explain all the Pokemon uh, by then, you know, as I'm doing the commentary at the same time. It's kind of like, I'm more thinking about it, it's kind of tricky at the moment. So we've got the Maractus coming in, and uh, I, I, I was thinking I could swap this out and go into another Pokemon. So I decided to save my Hitmonchan to the end and go into my Polyrath. Now, Polyrath is like, I'm going to explain Polyrath now. So Polyrath is sort of like, it's like just average all across the board. It doesn't have anything like really super duper good about it. It's just like an average Pokemon. Like lots of Pokemon can do its role really. So I think, like I believe that's why it's not used too often. And uh, yeah, it, it's, I mean, it's got average speed. It's, it's sort of just average across the board. I mean, you could run it under rain. That could definitely make it a lot better. But uh, you know, across the board, it's kind of average. And there's lots of other Pokemon that could like do its role better. So I guess that's why um, it would be down there. Anyway, so we got the, uh, this is, that was a choice spec set. We had Focus Mist Vacuum Wave on it, which was quite fun to use too, getting some, uh, special priority. Uh, we had Hydro Pump and Mud Bomb for those electric types. Those pesky electric types. I had Water Absorb with the ability as well. So now I'll bring in Hitmonchan. I can go for the Mac Punch and take out the, uh, the Maractus. Now, I knew the Sticky, uh, the Sticky Web. The, guys, it's Sticky Web. The, uh, Spiky Shield was coming. Why the hell did I call that Sticky Web for? And, uh, obviously I'm going to take a little bit of damage, but that's fine. I can take it out with a Mac Punch next turn. So Hitmonchan, right? Hitmonchan is another one of those, uh, it, it, it looks good on paper, but there are a couple of things about it that, uh, aren't so good. So it's defense for, for a start is pretty it's it's pretty crap like it's it's pretty great um also it's also it does get walled by uh definitely by ghost types because it really doesn't have a lot of like it doesn't have like a uh you know a really strong uh dark type move like i think it's got like you know thief pursuit things like that they're not the greatest moves in the world on it um like it, it, it that does hold it back definitely um, it does rely on its Mac Punch a lot, so it's got its its speed isn't the greatest, so it's really relying on its Iron Fist Mac Punch a lot. If it gets in a situation where it can't, you know, where it has to use something else, it does get outspent and it does get hit pretty hard. Anyway, so Rampados does leave the Mac Punch there. I'm gonna bring on Verizion. Now you guys are probably like, Verizion, why is that on the team? I'm gonna explain that in a second too. So we got the Rampados going for the Protect here. I went for the Z move on the Protect, and uh, this is Z Giga Drain on this set. We are running, let me see, we've got Verk Up, uh, Focus Mist, Giga Drain, and Hidden Power Ground. We've got the ability, obviously, is Justified and Item with Grass CMZ. Max Special Attack and Max Speed. I, I felt it'd be fun to run a special one. But for Verizion, right? Um, so firstly, with Verizion, right, I see this one as it heavily relies on a boost, right, from Sword Dance. It's very, it, it just doesn't hit hard enough without a Sword Dance or a Z move. That's the things I don't like about it. Um, it, it, it relies on those things a lot. It's very got it's physical like it's just not very good on the defensive side either. And it's also four times like weak to flying as well. So there's some of the things I feel he like holds it back. Like it does have some nice offense though. It you know can do very good. But there's some of the things that it holds it back. Anyway, this is another uh, battle. This is the second battle. This one's on my Discord. This one was against Mossy Dog. If you do want to join my Discord, that's in the description of the video too. Anyone is welcome to join. So we have the uh, Swamper going for the earthquake. Man, it does, it does nearly, it's like around half health. Now, I'm doing this Choice Specs hy uh, Hydro Pump on the Swap It. I think this could actually be Assault Vest, and I'm not too sure, depending on what EV is running. I'm quite uh, certain it actually is. So now we've got the uh, Swap It going for, staying in, going for another uh, Earthquake. Oh my pillow, I lived on three health, which is amazing. I wanted to say one so badly, people, but uh, it wasn't one. And I hit three Hydro Pumps in a row. It comes out of my swirly belly, and that's going to take out the Swap It. Uh, that, that was awesome. I was expecting to miss the Hydra Pups there. So that was that was a really nice start. Now we got the uh, Rotom uh, mower coming in. It's going to uh, mow the lawn with me. There's not but nothing I can do at all. I don't want to swap out. I'm choice I'm, like I'm choice specs. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna get outsped all day long. So I'm just gonna let that go. It got rid of the swamper. You know, that that's I, I was happy with that. Okay, so anyway. Obviously, we have the uh, Rotom going out with the Volt Switch there. And now we got the Walrein coming in. Now, I, I, there was one Pokemon I didn't explain. I'll get to that you know, in this battle. So we got the Big Bad Crab coming in. I'm going to go for the Mighty Close Combat on this thing. Um, a couple of these sets, I ran more like mainstream ones. And a couple of other ones, I ran silly ones. So I, I tried to like... 
I was trying to like balance this team a little bit. So we got the Fortress coming in there. It's going to be able to eat up that close combat. Our Fortress obviously is very, very bulky. Now, I know this is probably going to have some kind of like setup move like Stealth Rock or Toxic Spike, something like that. So I'm going to stay in and wear this thing down. Fortress does get worn down a lot unless it's got rest. I, I, I'm very confident that it probably won't have rest. So it's going to be a three hit KO from close combat. And uh, now Fortress is going to go for the Stealth Rock there. So that's fine. I mean, I, I'm glad I've got that. Once again, I'm glad I've got my uh, Crab Armor in at the moment being you know, an Ice type and stuff. So, uh, another close combat is going to be enough to take out the Fortress. I get the Quick Flow activation. It actually doesn't matter because I would have outsped it anyway. I kind of just have it on there for like speedy Pokemon that think they're going to, you know, outspeed me. They're going to like a surprise Quick Flow on them. is very, very funny. And uh, that's the Fortress down. So, I buried a really bulky Pokemon. There. Like, their team is quite tanky. Like, that uh, Swamp Hit, which is quite tanky. Warren's very tanky. And Fortress is very tanky. So now we got the Persian coming in. Hoping I can get the quick little activation. Uh, at this point, he didn't really want to risk us. I thought, hmm, that might be really, really handy for that Warren, right? So let's go into Throw. So Throw's going to take a little bit of damage from the Stealth Rocks. And now we got the Persian going for Retaliate. So Retaliate is going to get boosted by the Pokemon I KO'd earlier, which was the Fortress. That does a lot of damage to me. There's no way I can like withstand the next hit. So I'm just going to have to let Throw go. And uh, hopefully he'll be back in the next battle. So uh, that one's down. So I've, I really need to get rid of this Persian before uh, yeah, it wrecks my team with Retaliate. Now, I, I see them probably relying on this Pokemon a lot. So say if I do take a Pokemon in... Uh, like a Pokemon down. They're obviously going to keep bringing this Persian in over and over again to get the Retaliate KO. So, i got to get around that. So, now we've got the Arcanine coming in. Now, this, obviously, I was expecting this one to actually come in. I nearly went for a Earthquake here, but I thought, no, nah, let's go for close combat. So, that was in a negative one. It still does pretty good damage, but uh, I thought it'd do a little bit more than that. So, I thought, hmm, this has definitely got some kind of bulk to it uh, in EVs. And I can see, of course, it's got the Leftovers. So, I'm thinking most like, uh, you know, your Snarl, things like that. Um, I thought I would have a fire move, but I decided to stay in for something a little bit different. I thought they'd really expect me to swap there, so I decided to stay in and go for the Earthquake. Unfortunately, they're going to have will o -Wisp and that's going to land. I'm going to go for the Earthquake, and pretty much this is going to do nothing to the Arcanine. So my Crabomidal Crab is uh, basically dead weight now. But I'm going to do as much damage as I possibly can before I go down. That's the thing about the Crab 2. If it's not under, like, a Trick Room, it's it's really susceptible to getting outsped. Like, if this was, like, an offensive Arcanine, like, it would have just got distracted by Flare Blitz. So I go for the Crab Armor out. So I'm like, okay, it must have Roar or something like that. It's going to Roar. So obviously the Arcanine is working with the Swamp Head, getting up some Stealth Rocks damage, right? So I'm going to get Roared out, and now my Primark comes in. So I was thinking, hmm, I could go for the final Gambit against this thing, or I could risk the close combat. So on this set, this mainly worked around Final Gambit. We've got on this one, did it, we're Close Combat, Night Slash, U-Turn, and Final Gambit. Ability, Vital Spirit, and Item Choice Scarf. Now, I think I already explained... I'm pretty sure I actually explained Primate, but uh, yeah, I did I did actually ex explain that already too. It pretty much didn't have much to ghost types with outside of Night Slash, and even that's not like super reliable either. So we got the Arcanine going down. Now we got the Persian come in, swapping out the Primate there. I'm actually kind of thinking I might be able to outspeed the Primate since I'm a Choice Scarf, right? So at this point, I sacked the Crab Omeral just in case it wasn't there. And uh, it's going to go for a Retaliate. That's definitely going to take out the Crab. There's not much I could have done there. I really had to almost sack a Pokemon every time I KO'd one. Was getting to that stage. Now, I'm thinking this uh, this Persian is definitely Choice. Whether it's Choice Band, I, I'm thinking it's more Choice Band than Choice Scarf. It's already got good speed, so Choice Band would make more sense. So now, going for the Choice Scarf. Final Gambit on the Gumball, and it's not enough to take it out. I could have gone for a Close Combat there with no Attack EVs, but it made... It may have just lived depending on what uh, EVs they are running there. So I decided to get some damage, fixed damage off. I think that would have done, it would have done a lot to the Persian anyway. So now I, I knew that I had my Hitmonchan in the back to go for the Mac Punch. However, I wanted to get to actually boost my attack. This actually crits me with the it Retaliate. Unfortunately, didn't get a boost there, but that was really, really big because I'm actually running a Max Self, Max Defense Hitmonchan, right? With the Assault Vest. And uh, this build actually worked really nice. I've used this many, many times, and I've used it for years, right? So we've got Drain Punch, Power Up Punch, Mac Punch, and Ice Punch. It's a little bit redundant with all the fighting-type moves, but it actually works quite well. So now we've got the uh, Rotom coming in, going for the Volt Switch. It was actually Choice Specs. I take that one really, really nicely there. 
I don't think they actually expected me to win uh, win that matchup. You know, I, I definitely thought they thought my uh, Hitmonchan was going to go down. And now we've got the War Rain forced to come in there, taking the Drain Punch. Obviously, it, does, it leaves because I'm not running any attack EVs. But man, I got a lot of health back from the War Rain. I can simply go for the Mac Punch here and take out the War Rain uh, or the Power Up Punch. It doesn't really matter. And get some more attack against the Rotom. So the last Pokemon is the Rotom Mother. I can go for the Ice Punch. That's kind of why I run it. Just a Pokemon that, like, you know, that wall, uh, you know, wall my fighting time moves. And uh, that's pretty much it. I'm going to go for the Ice Punch and take out the Rotom. It's going to need, even with a crit, I don't think this is actually going to take me out. And it hits pretty hard. I, I think it could have taken me out with a crit. Um, but I'm going to go for the Ice Punch and take out the Rotom. And that one is game there. Hope you guys enjoyed this second battle. Let's get on to the third. Now, there was one Pokemon that I don't think I explained. I'm, I'm kind of racking my brain, like, what one it was. Um... I, I, I think I think I, I I really think I explained all of them. I could be wrong. I I think no, I explained all of them. Okay, so anyway, we got uh, this is the third battle on my Discord. This one was against Barlow. We have a Dodger lead. Man, that is too scary to even think about. Like even like letting survive in this battle. So I'm gonna just. KO myself first turn and KO the Dodrio. So that's how it was. I was very, very scared of that. And then after, like, you know, it's, it was a good move that you did that. So I'm guessing that's some kind of flying move, like Brave Bird or something, to, like, just destroy my whole team. So now we've got the Nido Queen coming in. I've got the big bad crap here. Now, Nido, Nido Queen is going to be a physical set going for the Fire Punch, doing big damage to me. I just live that one. I don't get burned or anything. And now I'm going to get an Ice Punch, an Ice Hammer off and take out the Nido Queen. So that was really good. Like, if he hit with Crab Bomb Roll, and it's a super effective move. You know you're going to take him out. It's uh, very, very awesome like that. Just a speed type thing. Man, I need a drink. Two seconds, guys. Okay, so I had my milk drink. Oh, here's a milk tank. And uh, I'm going to get the quick claw activation. I'm going to go for the close combat. Man, that was so good. It's such a bulky, annoying Pokemon to get around. And I uh, one-shot it. So it's a very trolley item, quick claw. Obviously, it's completely luck-based. But in those situations, uh, that was amazing. Getting rid of the milk tank so, uh, so easily and earlier on. Now we got another Pokemon coming in, the Mighty Farfetch. Speaking of uh, worst spike type Pokemon, man, I actually quite like doing this teams because I get to use like you know the worst, of the worst. But uh, I also I, I like to praise them on the things that you know the niches they're good at too. So definitely don't take offense to this one, guys. I'm trying to uh, use these Pokemon more often. Get, get let's get more people using these kinds of Pokemon. So now we got the Farfetch. I'm gonna go for the Vacuum Wave. It's about a uh, Three hit KO without a crit. Uh, Farfetch is probably going to be holding a stick. It does a lot of damage there with the Leaf Blade. Um, I am running max health though. That is the only reason I actually took that one. So go for the Wacky Wave on the Farfetch. And it lives on like one health. Oh man, and now it's going to take me out with the Leaf Blade. And uh, Polyrath goes down. Man, it was, it was fun using the Vacuum Wave choice back set. But uh, it was obviously very lackluster in power. And so now we're going to bring in the big bad throw. So throw could basically do anything against this. I don't want to go for focus miss because I know that's going to miss on one health. It always happens. However, we got the far fetch swapping out, which is rather interesting. So now we've got the uh, we got the Starmy coming in. So this is like, oh, this is good. I went for the hidden power. It's going to be super effective on the uh, on the Starmy. So it does okay damage, I guess, against Starmy. So it's about a three to four hit K. However, we got the Starmy going for a Psychic Zemeth. Now this actually wasn't an attacking move, this was a status move. So Starmy actually interestingly gets Cosmic Power. So it's going to boost its special defense and it's going to boost its special defense again with the normal effect of Cosmic Power. So it's got plus two in special uh, defense and it's got a plus one defense. So it's quite bulky, so I was thinking, Hmm, does this actually have recover on this set? It's like a bulky, like, stolly one or something like that. So I go for the Hidden Power Dark. I actually get a crit with a Scope Lens, which is amazing. Um, it's either gonna, I thought they might go for recover here and then attack me with Psychic afterwards. However, they're going to go for the Psychic right away, doing heavy damage to me. Unfortunately, I went for the Focus Energy there, over-predicting a little bit. But uh, it would have been, been amazing I could have gone for Hidden Power Dark afterwards. But... Uh, you know, when I seen Cosmic Power sinking, maybe it's like a, a real gimmicky set with Recover. However, it's not. It's going to take me out with the Psyching, and that's my throwdown. But that's all good. I've still got some more Pokemon running. So we got the Vrizion. Um, I explained Vrizion already. I'm very sure. Basically, it relies on Sword Dance and its Z-move very, you know, very, very heavily. Its defense is like, you know, basically uh, trash, and it's four times weak to fly. Other than that, it's a good Pokemon. You know, it's got some definitely great things about it. So this is a special set going for the Gig Drain, and I'm going to take out the Starmie with that one. So we got the Farfetch, and we got one other Pokemon. And I also still haven't used my Z-move either. Not that I think, at this point, I was like, I won't be able to use it because I know what the other Pokemon is. And uh, it's a Pokemon, right, that has that can have Sap Sipper, so I was very, very wary of using it. 
So now we got the uh, Farfetch going for the first impression on my Virizion. I'm able to actually lift that one and go for the uh, Giga Drain taking out the Farfetch. Man, I'm, I'm getting rid of the threats at the moment. Uh, getting, uh, I think we've got like one health recovery back for that Farfetch. Thanks for that. That's going to help out so much. And the last Pokemon is the Giraffe Rig. So I know this has a chance of having Sapsipper. If it's a, like a uh, special set, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to go for the Focus Miss. It lands, thank goodness. I outspeed, obviously. I'm actually running uh, Timonature on this. It doesn't take it out, but does big damage. Now, Giraffe Rig's going to be a physical set going for the Psychic Fangs, and that it's going to take out my Bruiser. we got one more Pokemon left. And uh, I know I'm going to be able to take this out because this is a Hitmonchan. I can just clean up with the uh, with the Mac Punch, and that is pretty much game. Hope you guys enjoy all three of these battles. Uh, make sure you guys come to the stream now. Follow me on uh, Pimp Knight YT. The link is in the description of the video. Follow there and come and watch the stream, and I'll catch you on stream. Peace.